So we do have some good news. There are more and more lawmakers that are now discussing the potential of increasing social security benefits. But how are they going to go about doing that? Well, today we're going to discuss exactly what they're talking about and why this could benefit you. Now, if you are currently collecting social security benefits, just understand that if this change were to go into effect, you would be impacted. And for those that are considering collecting social security benefits in the next 5, 10, 20 years, you will be impacted as well. Now, before I get into what this new bill is and why some are considering this, this has been on the table, I believe for over 10 years. Every single year, some lawmaker gets a bunch of supporters and backers and, and they propose this new bill. However, it still hasn't gone through. And you will see kind of why this is the case as we go through this. But first, I want to explain what the bill is. Then I want to explain how this works and how you are actually impacted. So before I get into any of this, if you can do me a favor, if you enjoy these daily updates, especially updates regarding social security, do me a favor, go ahead, hit that like button. It really does help out the channel and let's begin. So what is this bill? Well, I want to show you one of the bills because there's actually two bills. One is from Republicans. One is from Democrats. That right there is one of the keys. That is one of the reasons why they're, it's very difficult to pass this bill. Even though they're almost the exact same thing, they can't do it simply because one's a Republican bill, one's a Democratic bill. I'll explain the difference in just a second. But this is the first one. It's called the Eliminate Social Security Double Tax. Now, this is something that was reintroduced. It's by uh, Congress, uh, Congressman uh, Daniel Webster and also Thomas Massey. They both talked about this. This is called the Senior Citizens Tax Elimination Act. This has been proposed multiple times. That's the first one. Let me show you the second one really quick and I'll explain the difference. The second one is this one. It's called the You Earned It, You Keep It. This one is, again, pretty much the same thing, but you earned the money, now you get to keep it. The key here is that both bills are trying to eliminate this double tax. They're trying to eliminate the tax that you're paying on your benefits. And I'll explain more on that in just a second. But with this one, okay, this is the Senior Citizens Tax Elimination Act. This is a Republican bill. This one, this eliminates the tax, but it doesn't actually bring in new funding. And this was, according to reports, would likely increase our national deficit even more. So the first thing you need to keep in mind is Republicans are saying we need to cut back on spending. It's We can't continue to spend. But at the same time, this bill is now saying that we're going to eliminate this tax, but at the same time, we're not going to bring in any new funding. So it's probably uh, going to cause us to, uh, you know, go, become insolvent much sooner for one, but at the same time, we're again, the money isn't coming in. It's not being turned through. Okay. This other one, the democratic bill right here, this one has a little different approach. Okay. And you can see the, the actual bill, it's uh, HR um, 8717. But with that bill, and you can see this was brought to the House Representative back in August 16th, 2022. I'm serious about this, guys. I'm telling you, these bills are introduced in Congress every single year, I believe, for the past you know, 10 years, 11 years. It's been a while. Okay. But the difference here with this one is this bill right here. Um, there is as far as the, the, you earned it, you keep it act. This one, it does increase revenue and it increases revenue because it's actually increasing the payroll tax cap past the $160,200 per year. So that right there would offset any loss. Okay. Now I want to get to the, how this is going to impact you. Okay. Especially this one right here. The, the way this is going to impact you is actually pretty simple. They're trying to make it where your provisional income is zero. And if your provisional income is zero on your tax return, that means you are not paying any taxes on your social security benefit. Okay. But 
how is all this figured out? Well, I did a video on this the other day and I, I wanna touch on this again, okay? Because here's what you need to keep in mind. Um, so first off, you have your provisional income. Uh, we're just gonna call this PI, okay? PI, let me, let me uh, fix that. Okay, we got PI. My writing's horrible, sorry about that. Okay, we got PI, okay? And that is your income. Now, PI is your income, that's your provisional income. The way PI is calculated is you have your gross income, okay? You have your gross income right here, and you add that to um, its tax exempt uh, income or interest, okay? Tax exempt interest uh, or income. Plus, you will then get 50% of your social security benefit, okay? 50% um, of your SS benefit, All right? Now, the reason why, and this is gonna be your, your uh, provisional uh, income. You need to keep this in mind because this is different than what you are taxed on. Right? So this is your provisional income. Now I want to show you the next thing. The next thing is it's actually a uh, kind of a threshold chart. Okay. We'll put this in, in red. So we got for single filers, we also have married. Okay. You got these two different groups. Now what you need to keep in mind is single. If you make, let's say um, anything under $25,000. Okay. 25,000 or less, you're paying 0%, all right? So you would not pay taxes on uh, on your benefit, your social security benefit. But if you make, um, let's see, it goes from 25, it goes to 34,000, 34,000, okay? Then you pay 80, or you pay 50%, and if it's above 34,000, you pay 85%. Now, here's what you need to keep in mind, all right? Let me just show you this really quick. So let's say you make um, $30,000. You're single, you make $30,000, okay? Make 30,000, that's okay. What you need to keep in mind is at 30,000, um, if we come over here, 30,000 is right between this. So that means that you would actually pay 50%, okay? So right there, 50% of that, 50% of that number is 15,000. Okay, that is what you're gonna have to, uh, that's what the taxable amount that you'd be, um, you'd be taxed on, right? 15,000, not the 30,000. Also keep in mind, every single number matters, right? And, and this is something that I know a lot of people struggle with is understanding the tax code. I struggle with it as well. Um, I've talked to many different people, many accountants, they're all saying the exact same thing. Everybody comes in and wonders, well, what do I have to pay? Well, this is why this number matters, okay? This is your provisional income. This is the reason why that number matters so much is because that is the number that they're going off of to reach this, okay? And I'm gonna give you an example, okay? I'm, let me give you an example as well um, so hopefully this kind of clears things up, but right now, this is the hardest part is trying to figure out your numbers and how much you're going to pay. How much are you going to save if this bill were to pass, right? Or one of these bills passes. And again, just to be very clear, very transparent, do I think there's a chance one of these bills passes? Um, as is, no, they're not going to pass as is. One, it's trying to increase the, the Social Security payroll tax cap, and Democrats can't do that under President Biden because he promised all people that if you make under $400,000 per year, you will not pay a penny more in taxes. So we can't do it. But then the other one is gonna increase the national deficit. So right there, can't do it. So as is, are these bills gonna pass? No. But could these be a starting point and where they start to figure out a way to potentially put some together? and ensure that Social Security doesn't become insolvent, but at the same time, ensure that Social Security beneficiaries are getting all their money. Yeah, they could do that. So, here we go. And let me just throw out a quick little fact for you guys. Just so you know, okay, these numbers right here 
Oh, let me give you the married numbers as well, uh, just so you have that. But married, it's 32,000, okay, is 0%. Then it goes up to 44,000 is 50%. And then after that, anything above 44,000 is 85%. It's 85% of your benefit is taxable, not an 85% tax, okay? The other thing, and I just want to throw this out there, and, and uh, we'll do this on another, another sheet right here, but let's say you make $30,000, okay? $30,000 how much you make, okay? That's from your Social Security benefit, okay? On top of that, you also have, um, you also have, let's say, $40,000, okay? This is money that you make um, from gross income, okay? This is W-2 stuff, okay? So total, right there, you will have $70,000. You're probably thinking, oh, I'm gonna get taxed on $70,000? Crazy. Well, let's go back and look at the, at the, the, the thresholds. So let's say this is a single person, okay? They're single and they make $70,000, right? So here's what you need to keep in mind. Gross income right here, that is gonna be $40,000. They have no uh, tax exempt income, so it's 40,000 here, okay? 40,000 here, plus 50%, well, they have 30,000, right? But it's 50%, so actually it's only 15,000, 15,000, okay? So your your principal, uh, your uh, provisional in, uh, income right here is actually 15 plus 40. So it's actually 55,000, all right? So that's your provisional income, 55,000. Well, let's keep that in mind. Again, a lot of these numbers, you gotta look at all these numbers because this is where a lot of people are screwing themselves up is it's like, okay, so I now have a provisional income of $55,000. Well, how much do I have? Do I have to pay 85% in taxes? No, you don't. So again, your provisional income, all right, is $55,000. That's gonna be for tax purposes. Now, keep this in mind. Oops, shut off my iPad. Keep this in mind. And this is where a lot of people are screwing themselves over and thinking they're, they owe so much money or actually very little. Here's where things get very interesting. A lot of people say, okay, let me, let me come over here. So am I getting taxed? So is it 15,000, right? Well, is that 15,000, do I have to pay the 50% 50, the 50 of that, right? Is that what I'm paying 50% of? Or, and this is where uh, a lot of people get very confused, or is it 0% tax on 25,000? And, again, because remember, they got $30,000, and is it 50% tax on the other 5,000? Because again, if you add these two numbers up, this this one right here and this one, it would equal that number right there, okay? I just wanted to show you that because that's where a lot of people are getting confused is, okay, well, I'm only gonna pay, I'm paying 0% tax on that first 25,000, and then I'm gonna pay, uh, or, again, I'm gonna pay, uh, I'm gonna be taxed on up to 50% of that 5,000 which then if you add up those two numbers, okay, because this will be equal zero, this one will equal 2,500, 2, okay? So your total taxable amount is $2,500, right? Under this scenario here, versus what it actually is where it's 15,000, okay? That's where a lot of people are getting really messed up, and I just want to be very clear on that because I know I get asked all the time, hey, how does it work? What numbers am I putting in? And this is where, again, I get so many comments, so many questions that it's very confusing. The tax code in general is confusing, 
but then you throw in the tax code for social security recipients, that is very confusing, okay? Because then again, and I just wanna be very clear on this, you look at these numbers, okay? These are the thresholds, all right? These are the thresholds to understand how much uh, or up to what amount of your social security benefit you will have to pay taxes on. But then at the same time, then you gotta get the other chart. You gotta get the other tax bracket where it's like, okay, well, how much based off my income you know, do I have to pay? And I believe the, let's see, the 2023 uh, federal tax brackets. Let me just pull that up really quick so you can see it um, and see why it is so confusing, okay? Let's see, let's pull this up really quick. Um, so right here, this is the, the new income tax brackets for 2023. This is from Axios.com. You can see it right here, the marginal rate. You make less than $11,000 as an individual, it's 10%. This is where people get so confused is because the way this works is different than the way it works on the social security um, tax based off your benefits. Because look, you pay 10% of $11,000 or less. So, so you pay, what, 1100 bucks there. And then you pay 12% between 11000 and $44,000. And if this person was making um, uh, $70,000, they'd be in here, okay? But again, it's 15% or it's 50% of your social security benefit. So again, this is where it gets so confusing, all right? But this new bill, you know, granted it's, it's very difficult to understand because every single person's situation is different, but this new bill, or both of these bills, this one right here and this one right here, okay? This, uh, you earned it, you keep it. These two bills are gonna provide some savings, okay, all right? Some benefits, because it would take, you take your provisional income and put it at zero, where instead people are having to put in a certain figure. Maybe it's 10, 15, $50,000, who knows, but they're having to put that in now and pay taxes on that. But that was something that was enacted, I think in, in 1983 uh, or 1986, something like that. It's been almost 40 years since that was put in place, but before that, it was zero. So that's what we know regarding that tax situation. And yes, there are some people that are really uh, pushing this. But again, the reason why I bring this up is because there's, there's two different bills here. One's a Republican bill, one's a Democratic bill. They're both are asking for the same thing, but the difference is one is being funded by the taxpayers, people that make over $160,000 per year. Another one is pretty much gonna be funded by you know, the treasury and the, essentially the taxpayers in that way. But again, it's likely just going to increase the national deficit. So that's where we're at at this time. Hopefully that, that this uh, that little you know, presentation uh, cleared some things up. Chances are it's gonna bring up more questions as well. So if you do have any questions, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. I'll get to them as soon as possible. But again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.